This week as we are thinking about bread for the traveler, knowing that the journey can feel long, it can make us tired, we can face obstacles either from the outside or perhaps from our own doing, that we are reading Psalm 90, which takes us on a journey in and of itself. It says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, turn back, you mortals. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening, it fades and withers. For we are consumed by your anger. By your wrath, we are overwhelmed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your countenance. For all our days pass away under your wrath. Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are 70 years or perhaps 80 if we are strong. Even then their span is only toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger? Your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. So, Teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to your children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O prosper the work of our hands. Now this psalm takes us on a bit of a journey, beginning in a very hopeful manner, remembering that The Lord has been our dwelling place over many generations. But then the psalmist admits in a very transparent way that wrongdoing has taken place. Regret seems to be in the air. But even as the psalmist speaks of God's accountability, God's compassion is always within reach, which is why it is so important to read the entire psalm. Otherwise, we can get stranded in just one place on the journey that the psalm takes us, and we might get stranded there in the place where it discusses God's accountability, or in the psalmist's terms, God's anger. But we need to read the entire psalm to know that God's compassion is always within reach, which means wherever we are on the journey, wherever we find ourselves, we can find our home in the presence of God, that we are never alone. God is our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and our end, that before the mountains were formed, before the earth was created. A thousand years is like yesterday, that God is not constrained by place or time. God is always right there, wherever we are, which is comforting, but also concerning. (laughs) It's comforting because of God's compassion. It's also concerning because wherever we are, even when we are making a less than wise decision, 
God is there. That we find both God's compassion and accountability with us. That God is there whenever we make a decision that might hurt somebody else, where there is damage or harm. But right there is also God's compassion. As the psalmist says, God's anger is not forever. God's love can always lead us back to what matters the most. As it says, teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. It's difficult to talk about God's accountability, perhaps because it has been spoken of in such a way that it has disregarded God's compassion. That we can be afraid to speak about God's accountability because we never want to lose sight of God's love. We never want to speak of judgment more than grace, of sin more than forgiveness, of wrongdoing more than redemption. So we must remember that when the psalmist speaks, it speaks of the experience people have had and what insights they tell us for today. That they are more descriptive than they are prescriptive. That whenever we visit the doctor, we may get a prescription. That the doctor says, go and do this. Take this, eat this, add this to your life. Or the doctor may say, go and don't do this. Avoid this, don't eat that, subtract this from your life. It's prescribed for you. And if we think of God's accountability as prescriptive, we can end up going around trying to point out the wrongdoing of others. Go and do this. Go and don't do that. That we end up inducing guilt, prescribing shame, Condemning others. This is a misuse of the words of the psalmist. That the psalmist is describing an experience, not creating a prescription for us. And perhaps we all know the sting of regret where if we could go back and make a different decision, we would. Where either intentionally or unintentionally, we have hurt somebody in a way that we feel regret. And that is a heavy, hurtful feeling. That instead of going to someone and trying to explain how we feel and it not be taken seriously, you know, where we finally must up enough courage to say, I wish I never did this. And someone goes, oh, it is no big deal. Don't worry about it. That does not help us as much as when someone takes us seriously and says, I understand. That is a heavy burden to carry alone. Let me help you carry it as well. Let me share with you a similar experience in my life and how I was finally able to put it down and to move forward. That we need the wisdom of the psalmist that reminds us There is always more love in God than there is sin in this world. That we learn to count our days. Which is a sobering thought to know that there is a limited amount of them, but it teaches us to value each and every day. The gift that is inside of every morning can help us make our lives more meaningful, where we pay attention a little bit more, where we listen to those around us, where we give thanks more often, where we 
treasure the gifts that we have received. It's the type of accountability that the psalmist talks about. Where we might not get sidetracked from what is most important. Or we might not ignore a risk that is worth taking. Or we might take the time that is necessary to help. It's the gift of right now. Not where we get lost in the past, where we are weighed down by regret, where we just wish we did things differently, and not lost too much in the future, where we're just focused on not being the person we have been in the past, somehow redeeming ourselves by achieving more. That instead, we have the gift of right now. Because God is not constrained by time or place. That God is with us. That we can be at home in God's presence wherever we are in the journey. And home always involves accountability and compassion. That there is something truly comforting about home We can be who we are with those who know us and love us, but in that same place, there are always those expectations of those people who think the best of us and know the best of us. That God is our home, our dwelling place, like the welcome mat that always says to us that we belong or the kitchen table where there is always a chair for us with people who know us, whether we are tired or hungry or worn down, we can sit down and eat and be restored. Or like the room where we all gather after the meal to sit and talk and laugh and share, where we can be ourselves, where we can love ourselves, where we are loved by others and we can love them that when we find our home in God, in the gift of right now, we find bread for the traveler. Not yesterday or tomorrow, but today. Amen.